one. Uh, let me ask whether you know what is GSM first. Have you ever heard of the term GSM? Sorry. What is GSM? Did you hear it any time? Please be active so that even it will be something like in interactive session. I can make sure that you are getting something. Okay, where have you seen that? I mean, it is related to what? What do you think it deals with? Answer me one question. You, I think most of you are having mobile phones, right? Which bands does it support and which scheme does it support? You are having 1G, 2G, 3G and 4G, right? Uh, if you see that specifications or whenever you buy some mobile, if you see the specifications or features in that it will be mentioning, in that it will be there like uh, 1800 megahertz, LTE, 3G. I didn't get you. What do you mean by download icon? No, you are seeing it from documents, right? Yeah, I load. You can download. Thank you, Narada. Question Sadhakari. There are feelings in the number of regulatory or you have to be able to do it. 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 So if you want to download, you can download maybe after this session. Let me uh, continue with the session because it's already 9.20 and uh, we have more one hour, I guess. So, so, so in your mobile specification, you will be seeing the Right, whether it is 900 or 1800, some other 2100 megahertz. Uh, if it is LTE, also we are having like 1.4 gigahertz, 3, we are having 5 bandwidths in LTE. I think you all are aware of LTE. LTE is nothing but 4G. So, in 1G, before going to GSM, is related with 2G. I think you all know what is 2G at least. Okay, first let me start with uh, 1G. In 1G, we are having AMPS. AMPS is nothing but advanced mobile. Uh, uh, for that, um, for 1G, what is ha what happened is, yeah, in 1G, we are having analog communication. Okay, uh, advanced mobile phone system, something I guess. And there, we are used to have only analog signals, and uh, that is only for voice purpose. So, in order to transmit voice from one place to another place, we used to have this AMPS. So later on, uh, later on GSM came into the picture, nothing but 2G. In 2G, um, this GSM in the sense, as you said, global system for mobile communication. In 2G, what it supports? It supports uh, voice, uh, voice along with, uh, it maintains circuit switched packet. I think, you know, circuit switch, what is the difference between circuit switching and packet switching? Or else I will be explaining in the next slide, maybe. 
so here it follows the circuit switching network and uh, it allows voice along with this it allows mms sms uh, mm along with this we can also some like we can also have some options like use for mobile you are having user interface like right? so, so in that you will be capable of seeing what is the user and uh, from where you are getting the call uh, like these things and uh, user is given many options like a call blocking call pairing yes, uh, so all this kind of stuff so when coming to three uh, here uh, in gsm uh, in uh, amps we used fdd fdd is nothing but frequency multiplexing fdm frequency division multiplexing i think uh, in the previous session i explained what is fdm tdm and cdm okay so uh, uh, they are FDM in the sense so each user is allocated to set of frequencies as I told you what is cell cell is nothing but a coverage area in which the user is present or the tower is present so each tower will be having some coverage area that is called as one cell so that uh, tower may have antennas like it can be a directional antenna it can be a sectorized antenna based on that whatever based on the density of the people and based on the coverage towers will be deployed so after deploying the towers uh, whenever coming to GSM, it is like the bandwidth. The bandwidth is increased, and moreover, the number of people that are served are increased, and also so. so let me. This is the contents for today. Uh, GSM services. What is the architecture? Uh, what are the aspects increased when compared to 1G, like security, or uh, what aspects are uh, increased and uh, what are the characteristics of GSM and what are the advantages and what is the future of GSM okay uh, it is actually the old one as of now we are in 4G now and even we are having specifications related on uh, in our team as of now we are doing we are working on LTE that is nothing but 4G okay first let me explain you this and then I can relate with that also okay so in the um, I think I'm saying something and okay. So uh, in 2G, what we are in 2G is GSM, right? In GSM, we are having what is GSM basically? GSM is nothing but it is a second generation cellular standard developed to cater voice services and data delivery using digital modulation. In 1G, as I told you, we use analog modulation, and here we, we are using digital modulation. I what is digital modulation? Amplitude modulation and digital modulation have explained in the previous session. Under digital modulation, we will be having ASK, PSK, phase shift keying, frequency shift keying, amplitude shift keying, these kind of things. So the only thing between analog and digital modulation is, for analog modulation, both carrier and message signal will be analog, whereas what happened? Is there any issue? Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, G, uh, since GSM, GSM is uh, mainly for serving the voice services, data services uh, using digital modulation. As I told you, uh, for digital modulation, the only thing that changes is the message. Message will be in the form of bits, zeros and ones, and the carrier signal will be in the form of normal analog signal. So both will be integrated and they will be sent out. I, I think I have explained how the modulation scheme looks like and what is the output of ASK, ASK and MSK. Uh, okay, so when I talk with GSM, this in this has like data rate has been increased and voice services like we have got some extra features. How did we get that? So what is the architecture of GSM? Let's see what is the architecture. When coming to 3G, we are having CDMA. You know what is CDMA, right? Code division multiple access. Uh, I'll be uh, all these multiple access techniques will be a part of MAC layer. Then you correlate with OSI layer. So what you'll be having, you'll be having a layer one that is nothing but physical layer. Above that, you'll be having data link layer, right? So what physical layer mainly deals with this modulation technique. Whenever a signal goes out, like into air, it will be from a device, nothing but a device, maybe be your phone so that physical layer is thing but it deals with what modulation what are the bit rates and uh, how to adjust those bit rates uh, those kind of things okay uh, 
when coming to data link layer whether that is correct or not whether we need to control flow whether receiver is capable of receiving whether it has errors whether we need to retransmit these kind of things will be taken care by data link layer right so above that we will be having ip layer transport layer i think you know ip layer ip layer is discussed by my colleague i guess in the recent session and also you are having transport layer transport layer uh, also well, like transport layer deals with udp and what sockets you are using for transporting kind of things and above that you will be having session layer presentation layer and application layer so whenever you have some stack kind of thing i think uh, which is related to mobile computing you can correlate this stack with the osi model so that it will be easy for you to create and you will be capable of understanding it easily okay so uh, Uh, this is gsm mainly and uh, how it enhancements has done and what the what because of what changes uh, some good uh, good data rates ha has come into the picture let's see that and coming to the history it was developed by some conference uh, european post and telecommunication generally when forming some such kind of things so all the uh, uh, for lte we are having 3gpp specs 3GPP specs in the sense third generation partnership. So if some representatives from every country, higher officials will be going together and having some conference, and they will be forming specs so that it should see if we uh, if we sell something that shouldn't be vendor that will be like vendor specific. So everyone should be on common platform, right? So in order to maintain that common platform, uh, 3GPP specs will be there. Everyone who implements stack or everything, they have to they have to follow the 3GPP specs so that everyone will be on common platform. And if you send something, they can connect to that or they can have some penability. Okay, uh, coming. This is the history of this. Maybe it is it is named as global system uh, for mobile communication in 1989. and full set of specifications as i told you specifications in the sense it has what it deals with what are the layers in stack how it communicates what transport layer contains i mean what are the uh, like udp you can connect sctp so what are the connections possible in like file layer what features it should provide mac layer what features it should provide and uh, what are the information elements that need to be transferred when you are making call there will be number of parameters right so what are the parameters that need to be uh, get transferred parameters in the sense information elements will be calling that as information elements technically so what are the information elements these things will be mentioned in the specs and what are the values that need to be assigned to it and what are the bandwidths gsm is supporting everything will be mentioned because I, as i told you bandwidth is very very costly so our options will be conducted and based on that only they will be buying operators will be buying and they will be providing or signal should be there right okay uh, phase 2 in the sense they'll be releasing for every i think 6 to 7 months maybe for every one year in that also we are having phase 1 and phase 2 in phase 2 Phase two occurs in 1995. It's already over, uh, and the coverage is extended uh, in GSM. Coverage is extended to even rural areas. Okay. Okay. See, maybe in I think in 2005 March, as the figure here shows, the three percent of India is using this GSM in the world. So these are the different. Yeah, these are the different. Uh, Uh, countries like europe and india maybe 43% is uh, 43% asia pacific is using almost 43% in the uh, 43% of gs that many are uh, the highly GSM is 2G. In 2G also later on versions came into the picture. The 1G AMPS, 2G GSM, 2.5 GPRS came into the picture, and then uh, in 3G uh, we are having CDMA, UMTS. 3G is nothing but UMTS, 4G is nothing but LTE. So these are the percentages in 2005. Uh, how many people are using? How much percentage of globe is using uh, this GSM when compared with world? and uh, this is the some these are the percentages when taken in india network operator 
you are having network operators right h idea aids bhakti how many persons uh, i mean how many operators have bought the uh, spectrum and uh, how they allocated how many people are using how much percentage is used by the operators for this gsm you see the highest is i think bharti i don't know if it is existing still now uh, in india i am familiar with idea had say it's a relevant bsnl mtnl okay so these are some of the percentages and figures so what are the gsm services what services it is offering when compared with 1g what are tele services what do you mean by tele you are having telescope telephone everywhere you are using tele so what do you mean by tele tele is nothing but distance what are the services tele services in the sense so you will be uh, you will be providing voice calls as i told you voice call sms uh, uh, invoice data services these services which only for pro- this is like point to point communication tele in the sense distance and for point, for establishing some calling to someone so you are you will be calling to some other number that can be a mobile that can be a landline or that can be any gsm phone or 3g phone it can be any phone right so it it will be a tele services nothing but point to point service i think in next slide you are having yeah telephone services that enable voice communication via mobile phones okay so what are the services offered mobile telephony so emergency calling in emergency normally process happening whenever you call whenever you call it has to go through some internal network elements and then it will be connected to the uh, destination so in emergency situation whenever you call these things won't happen some will be uh, some i mean some steps will be missed i mean we will be missing so that in emergency in the sense it should be served first right it should be having it uh, should be provided with higher priority so we'll be providing higher priority for that and missing some we voluntarily will be missing some steps for that so these kind of things emergency calling and uh, mobile telephony these are the services are offered in tele services and the two more things what we are uh, two more other services is bearer or data services and supplementary services so what do you mean by that okay bearer services in the sense uh, bearer bearer what do you mean by bearer bearer is nothing but some point to point some point to uh, see uh, bearer in the sense some tunnel kind of thing other some see some bridge kind of thing like whenever you want to transmit from one one signal to other signal it can be either wide you can establish a wide and it can be either wireless so that is nothing but there is some tunnel which is established between two points in order to serve certain services so that is nothing but there what are the bearer services that are offered sms sms is one of the example and voice mail box is one of the example um, it includes various data services for information transfer between gsm and other networks so psdn is nothing but upvo network when i show you the architecture you will be coming to know what is psdn uh, like it is the central network through which data will be transferred outside world or the outside some other msc or some other things so in order to get uh, like it is it has to go through psdn whenever you make a call whenever you transfer something or transmit something some sms for these kind of services it goes to public switch telephone network okay the data rates will be from 300 to 9600 uh, and uh, the offers will be like sms under the bearer services you will be having sms voice voice mail box okay Uh, what are supplementary services supplementary services means some additional services that are given to you right so uh, that is something that call related services whenever you call some and maybe he is in some other call then he will be getting call waiting so that will be notified so in 1g we don't have such kind of stuff we'll be just calling and uh, we don't know if that person is on call or if that person is uh, busy with some other thing if even if he is not attending we don't get some thing some notification kind of thing uh, in return so like we'll be waiting for some time until he picks the call or uh, we'll wait i uh, will disconnect and we'll connect but here it is not the case we'll be we are provided with some supplementary services like call waiting and call hold we can put the uh, when we are speaking with someone you may get some other call then you can keep this call in hold and you can call you can attend the call of other person and call bearing 
So if you, I think uh, for postpaid customers, if you don't pay some your uh, bill kind of thing, first they'll be blocking your uh, outgoing calls. You can't call to some other person, right? And then uh, they'll be later on, they'll t- they'll give some time, some grace period, I guess. They'll be giving that, and later on they'll be blocking outgoing. Uh, yeah or oh, incoming calls also they'll be blocking first outgoing calls then incoming calls and after maybe if that period is over they'll be disconnecting the service itself right so you can keep this call barring option uh, this for all calls or outgoing calls you can also bar the calls you will be provided with some option in your phone right so you can bar the calls and call forwarding i think you know what is call forwarding when you are busy or something if you don't uh, some calls you can just uh, deviate the call to some other person that can be provided uh, that can the you that you you can provide in your mobile uh, using your mobile phone settings and uh, multi party call conferencing so linking up many pool like uh, you'll be talking and some other person will be joining and some this i think and as of now you're having skype team chats team viewers many kind of stuff right that is under 4g but this is under 2g that time this is more enough like uh, this is something new to other people even in villages i think even conference there, there are many people let me in bearer services as i told you so uh, bearer is nothing but some tunnel kind of thing in bearer services we'll be having uh, transparent uh, data transfer and uh, non bearer services can be again classified as two types one is transparent and uh, one is non transparent and the other is also synchronous data transfer and asynchronous data transfer so uh, what is what is transparent data transfer and transparent transparent in the sense um, whatever comes into the whatever is incoming will be just pushing will be just pushing it out nothing but whatever comes in will be just pushing in the sense no changes we are making we are not uh, adding the header part or see for every pdo in osi model when you comes to bottom application layer you will be having right so when you are comes when you comes to presentation layer and then to session layer each layer will be having its own header Session layer header like uh, trans uh, UDP header and IP level we will be having IP header and uh, MAC level also you will be having MAC related header. What are the control elements? These things you will be getting added for each and every layer so that when you whenever you receive in the receiver side, <coughs> sorry, uh, whenever you receive it in the receive side, there also you will be having these high layer, MAC layer, these layers, right? So these layers, what they will do is whatever is in, encoded in the transmitter side, these layers are capable of decoding that signals, decoding that uh, things. Like uh, whatever, if it is encoded in five, only five can decode that. Even if it is passed to some other layer, it, it can't understand what it is. The format will be between this five and transmitter five and receive, and also between transmitter MAC. similar to that uh, transmission uh, transmitter session layer and this session layer so whatever is encoded by a specific layer from transmitter that can only be decoded by the uh, that specific layer related layer in the receiver okay so uh, this transparent uh, services in the sense uh, it will be watched only by five layer uh, five layer will be transmitter of uh, five layer present in the transmitter will be sending the signals and the receiver will be uh, receiving the signal so transparent nothing is added uh, no header part or nothing uh, like error corrections no this kind of stuff is added for since no there are no changes so uh, here but one thing they will be using is you are sending it okay fine but there may be some errors right whenever you send it it may be so whenever you send there may be uh, it may be so since it is uh, radio communication radio in the sense communication right so whenever you are sending it to it there may be some interference there may be some noise there may be some other stuff which will be uh, uh, interfering with our signal so because of that our signal may lose or some of our inputs may get corrupted so right so for that purpose what they will be doing is they are using forward error correction the forward error correction in the sense uh, they assume that something may go wrong and they'll be sending some redundant bits redundant correction okay uh, they'll be uh, sending some uh, redundant parity bits you know 
i think you know what is parity bits so for every single uh, for every some group of bits we'll be having some redundant bits and we'll be sending that so what happens is whenever you receive it the receive you are transmitting some n bits some m parity bits you will be having m redundant bits so whenever you receive if something from n bits goes down that redundant bits will help you uh, in in receiving i mean in uh, take in getting the original signal right if n bits is the original signal m m can be the redundant bits so the receiver with the if n bits are corrupted in if some bits from that n message bits are corrupted then you with the help of that redundancy bits you will be capable of receiving the original signal maybe the complete signal at least you will be getting 99% of the signal with the help of redundancy bits so for this purpose there is no handshake kind of thing handshake in the sense you are sending some in message and you will be getting acknowledgement for that whether it is received properly acknowledgement nax nax is nothing but so is there any issue Okay, just a second. Okay, fine. So, yeah. Uh, so this is involved with this. Uh, there is no handshaking transparent layer. So since there is a uh, since we are sending redundant bits like forward error correction, no need of uh, handshaking kind of thing. So this is nothing but transparent data transfer. Suppose you are sending some m bits. Maybe n bits are the redundant m bits are some a rough uh, message kind of bits and n bits will be the redundant bits. So what is your data rate? Data rate see, if since n is the num. in that additional n bits also we can data but instead of that since we are send, sending redundant bits now our data rate will be decreased can you answer because data rate will be decreased to n by m by n plus m right so this is how data rate will be transfer uh, will be calculated i think uh, in your textbook also there are some examples you can solve those example and at the end of the chapter you will be having some puzzle kind of things you, you can solve that like if this is the rate data rate and these are the number of bits what is the data rate that can be achieved and uh, if you are uh, transporting that using multiple channels like four different paths uh, what is the data rate those kind of things okay and uh, then this is transparent data transfer what is transparent non transparent in the sense as i told you uh, some header parts will be added so it consists of mainly physical layer layer 1 yeah i'll uh, i'll go through that eir and authentication just give me some time if you want to start if you want me to start with the architecture i'll start off with that now you are fam you are uh, i think uh, if you are confident in this transparent non transparent and uh, synchronous and asynchronous data transfer i will continue with architecture that is up to you you can decide shall i start with architecture then okay then i will explain in two sentences what is non transparent and uh, what is synchronous and asynchronous and then i will start with uh, 
architecture okay so here uh, in non non transparent we'll be having data link layer and physical layer in data link layer we'll be having uh, header part we'll uh, like whether it is error correction or error detection this kind of things here we will be having handshake handshake mechanism and handshake in the sense it will be having acknowledgements uh, we will be providing acknowledgements and some header parts will be added and flow control and error control will be there flow control in the sense when you say you like for detecting the errors uh, like some mechanism mechanisms and some algorithms will be provided and based on that you will be uh, sending that is something goes on some er erroneous data is received what you will be doing is you will uh, tell that uh, this part of the video i didn't receive or this message i didn't receive to the transmitter then what it will be doing is it will be just retransmitting the signal so like mainly it supports error detection and correction okay correction of data and coming to uh, synchronous asynchronous and uh, synchronous pa packet data transmissions so what do you mean by synchronous synchronous in the sense uh, see transmitter is in sync with receiver see when someone is speaking and the other person is not listening then there is no sync existing between them so even speak something even if he is not uh, listening that is waste of speaking right that is waste of bandwidth and waste of everything so there will be sync between that here in synchronous uh, uh, transmit and in synchronous data transmission there will be some sync established between uh, transmitter and the receiver so uh, like we'll be having timing advance so it will send transmitter will send to receiver like receive at this time receive at this particular time uh, i'll be sending the pdu at this particular time so be on be in on state for this particular amount of time these kind of messages be handshake messages will be uh, exchanged control messages will be exchanged before and then it will be sending so whatever it is that free frequencies whatever frequencies it is sending to that frequencies and whatever bitrate it capable if even if it is not capable then also it will be a problem so these exchanges like bitrate and frequencies bandwidth these things will be exchanged what should be the uh, bandwidth between the two i mean that sync and whenever uh, something trans gets transmitted it will be received uh, receiver so the best examples for this can be voice and sms so whenever you are sending some voice whenever you are speaking and that things and sms can be the best example for synchronous even if something goes wrong we don't retransmit again in synchronous since there is no point like whenever transmitter and receiver are, are in sync if you are transmitting and he is receiving why to transmit it again there is nothing which will go in vague or uh, which will be unclear so everything will be in sync so because of that there is no handshake and there are no retransmissions for this when coming to non synchronous asynchronous <coughs> asynchronous in the sense transmitter will wake up any time it will send the signals any time that time receiver may be ready or receiver may not be ready there are many states for receiver right it may be serving some other uh, persons or other users it may be busy with something or it may be off it may be deactive uh, then uh, then this asynchronous comes into the picture so there is no sync between them so what we'll be having is transmitter will be sending something so if receiver has received that thing what it will be doing it will be sending acknowledgement for that and uh, if it didn't receive it will be uh, giving negative acknowledgement so based on that we will be having uh, the transmitter will be retransmitting it okay here we don't here we'll be having handshake mechanism in that we don't have handshake mechanism in transparent uh, and uh, synchronous mode okay uh, the other thing will be packet transmissions packet transmissions in the sense i think you know what is circuit switching and packet switching so okay, in gsm we are having circuit switching whereas in gprs general packet radio service there we are having uh, that is nothing but 2.5g as i told you 2g is gsm 2 gprs in 2.5g we are having uh, mm, packet switch to data network packet switching here we are having circuit switching circuit switching in the sense there is some um, like suppose a and d there will be a fixed path between them uh, suppose there may be some like we are having in between switches right in order to transmit something to other uh, other thing there, there will be some fixed look like both are fixed and the link should be fixed unless and until they cut the call this link can't be teared down i, I mean this link can't be broke whereas coming to packet switching we'll be having two destinations a and b in between we'll be having switches so these packets can go through any route suppose there are some there, there are some a b c d e these are the switches 
kind of thing and you are having some uh, one and two as the source and destination so source one is transmitting packets to b one is transmitting to two it can take a path of a b c or it can take some other path only thing is after receiving i mean after here uh, it receiver after receiving on the receiver side the packet while transmitting will be having sequence number appended to every packet so when it receives at the receiver based on sequence number it will be reordering those sequence numbers so because um, we can't say right um, some may take long path to travel to b some may take less i mean shortest path to travel to b for this also we are having routing algorithms okay so some may take short path some may, uh, some others may take long path so what it will, after receiving what it will be doing since it is not ordered it is an ordered pair it will be real changing the sequence numbers this is nothing but packet so here the advantage of packet switching is we can't wait we can transmit a's data b's data like we are having if suppose many transmitters like many users or many mobiles so we can transmit you like nothing but our lan cables these kind of things you are having right so we will be transmitting so that it will get it will be having source and destination ip address based on the destination ip address it will go to particular destination whereas in circuit switched fixed link is established unless and until that is broken you can't use that switching you can't use the element in between uh, for some other users okay so many number of users will be served with the help of packet uh, packet transmissions packet data transmissions okay uh, that is why um, after two after 2.5g in the sense gprs has implemented this packet switching because of which data rates has highly highly increased to a great like it increased to a great extent okay i uh, like um, Uh, in your textbook there are some examples for the different data rates how to calculate what is the data rate for d what is the data rate for uh, transmitter 1 these kind of examples are there please to solve that uh, examples okay let's start with the gsm architecture now so uh, coming to gsm architecture uh, you know what is sim right yeah i know i think you know <laughs> because every person will be using the phone i think uh, and uh, you will be having sims in that uh, do you know the full form of sim sim and u sim okay sir if you see the architecture here we will be having mobile equipment mobile equipment is nothing but our mobile phone in that mobile phone you are having sim you will be having you will be provided with some uh, slim sim slot right there you will be inserting your sim and you will be using your services uh, here you will be having and now in sims also you are having micro, micro sims nano sims right normal regular sims yeah subscriber identity module subscriber identity the name itself suggests uh, the meaning right so subscriber is identified with some num number like if you take some mobile phone if you are given one sim in the sense you have you are given some identity for that sim you are giving some identity see for mobile equipment basically you will be having one identity and for sim you will be having one identity mobile equipment in the mobile equipment <coughs> mobile equipment in the sense mobile mobile is nothing but some hardware device right that hardware device is provided with imei number imei number in that is that is the reason when you lost you like suppose you have lost your phone somewhere and then that time the police people will be asking uh, please provide your imei number imei number is nothing but international mobile identity number uh, like it provides what it provides is it will be having who is the manufacturer of the of your mobile and uh, what are uh, like who is the equipment i mean equipment manufacturer and other details where it is manufactured those kind of details related to that hardware unit will be provided in the ime i think and sim is nothing but sim is uh, like it stores the identity of your of the person like who has registered with that sim what is the name of that person where he resides those kind of things will be uh, that is the reason you some other card or something will be taken when you take some new sim kind of thing okay uh, this is sim and this is nothing but so this is uh, when this is mobile station in mobile station that is purely your mobile equipment when coming to base base station sub system here you will be having bts bts is nothing but base station transceiver and receiver transceiver transmitter and receiver okay 
base station is nothing but the bsc is nothing but base station controller okay uh, controller in the sense it will be con- it will like many base stations will be present under this uh, base station controller so what are the activities uh, uh, it will be doing we'll be seeing in the next slide and uh, other thing will be networking will like net in under network subsystem we will be having msc M- msc is nothing but mobile switching center and under that mobile it is mainly responsible for paging informations for broad broadcasting kind of things and uh, also for uh, routing kind of things and for some control services it is the main thing which will be uh, for switching uh, phone from uh, like calls from one mobile to some other international number and some other uh, um, mobile which is present in some some other state those kind of things Uh, mobile switch taking care of and this is nothing but hlr hlr is nothing but home uh, home local register and vlr is nothing but uh, visitor loca- location register sorry uh, visitor location register eir is nothing but equipment identity uh, register and uh, auc is nothing but authentication center so uh, this hlr is for registering your whenever you take something it, your profile and the, what are the services you offered like he is provided with 3g services what are the even if he is prepaid or postpaid customer uh, like how much data we can give and um, uh, is he is his phone supporting 4g and 3g features and i mean the entire profile of your uh, entire profile of yours will be in hlr home location register so your profile will be definitely in one of the hlrs in india okay uh, so only one hlr will be having your profile so whenever you go to some other state that will be added under vlr vlr is nothing but visitor since you are visitor to some other location that will be added as visitor lo- that will be added into visitor location register this is nothing but some database kind of things which uh, stores all your data whether he is authenticated user uh, authentication center will be taking care of authentication this is only for uh, like storing the profiles of uh, yours uh this is nothing but equipment identity register as i told you imei number what is the equipment who is the manufacturer and where from where he has taken that phone all these kind of details will be uh, will be stored in eir so that whenever you see there may be cases like you may be lost your your phone and uh, there may be cases like uh, your phone is not working so you have put it somewhere and there may be cases like it, it is active right there may be three there are actually three things black list white list and gray list that i'll be explaining uh, and nothing but authentication as i told you this is pstn public switch telephone network so everything will be finally connected to pstn and from pstn if you want to like your phone can be in under this ms msc or it can be under and msc will connect to other ms for routing of calls that other msc will broadcast like i am getting all from some so and so number it will give to all the base stations under that and this base stations what it will do is it will broadcast so to whom it is relevant you will be having all mobiles under base station so to whom it is relevant that person will be taking the call okay uh, that calling procedure i will be explaining you and uh, see in architecture uh, this things i think i explained you equipment identity register authentication center vision let us see in detail what uh, each thing see mobile station is made up of two entities mobile equipment and subscriber identity module okay see mobile equipment portable mobile equipment is not mobile which is portable vehicle mounted handheld device right uniquely identified by imei number i told you for every mobile phone you will be provided with imei number that is the reason when you when some people buy their phone they will be making note of imei number so that even if they lost that with the help of this we can whenever you tell to police that then he first question he will be asking is imei number when you provide him with that he will be just checking if uh, that is how where it is lost he'll be taking that details and he'll be inquiry he'll be doing some inquiry kind of stuff okay and uh, voice and data transmissions with one 
now you are capable of uh, having voice calls and data this is 2g please uh, be in 2g okay in uh, if you come into lte there are many more advanced features so in 2g only we are having voice and data transmission and monitoring power and signal strength for hunting and over hand over i think you know right uh, now as of you are under one tower and you are moving so you can't stay at one whenever you are moving that uh, that place may be under some other uh, base station right so this your phone will be and your call will be handed over from one tower to another tower right that is nothing but handover so for handover whenever you are moving see suppose this is base station a this is base station b from here you are moving here the signal strength of base station a is high so here you are go on going on moving to base station you are like you are up to two suppose so the signal strength of base station a will fall down and the signal strength of base station b will be there b will be high so what it will do is it will take decisions based on that it will be reporting every time what is the signal to the surrounding cells uh, like from which the mobile will be reporting what is the signal strength to uh, base stations like i am receiving high signal from base station receiving less signal from this kind of base station this measurement reports uh, basically there will be two parameters received signal strength power and si received signal strength quality what is the quality of signal and what is the power of signal based on these two fact facts that's for every neighbor cells if mobile is surrounded by some five cells that five cells reports it will be giving base station so based on that what base station will do whatever is high if it is if the current thing is falling down and uh, if uh, the thing is high i mean if the next uh, base station's uh, power is high and quality is high then what it will do is it will make a decision to hand over from one this tower a to tower b <coughs> and what are the power levels and what are the sms how much long it will support this is the long which a 166 character long sms will be supported in gsm by mobile uh, coming to subscriber identity module sim as i told you smart card contains international mobile identity so that is a unique one even though you go to us if you are having this sim that is like in terminal wise you are having you are having some unique identity to that you are given some unique identity that is nothing but imc okay <coughs> allows users to send and receive calls and receive other subscribed services that thing you i think you know protected by a password or pin for this you are having pin that is the reason you, you know i think uh, what is puk service like uh, whenever your sim is blocked or blocked some you will be having some puk that sim is registered with some password and where that password will be i think all zeros four zeros i think so whenever your sim is blocked if you call to the customer care they'll be giving you puk number help of puk number even if it is uh, locked we can unlock that using that puk service i think uh, there is some whole form i don't uh, exact yeah pin unblocking key with the help of this pin unblocking key even if it is blocked we can just unlock it so protected by a password or pin even if you want you can also uh, lock your pin uh, lock your sim with the help of a pin uh, can be moved from phone to phone <coughs> it also contains information to activate the phone whenever you are getting some call it will be they can like it will be active and you can have options like switching off and uh, when to become active these kind of things and the sim can also be moved from one phone to other phone right hmm base station sub system what is base station is nothing but as i told you in real time you can see the towers it under base station you will be having number of be deployed based on that density and uh, based on the density of the people and also based on the um, number of people it can support and based on the bandwidth okay so number of transceivers like base station sub system will be having transmitters and receiver transceivers that is called that is why it is called as base transceiver so whenever you are sending something it should be capable of receiving and also maybe other user may be using for uh, other may be transmitting the signal at the same time so for this purpose that uh, station the base station itself is equipped with many transmitters and receiver in gsm i think it is 
10 to 11 phones can be supported users can be supported simultaneously i guess mm. Simultaneously and base station subsystem is supposed of two parts that communicate across the standardized a base Interface allowing the operation between the component made by different suppliers. Okay, base station you will be having for air interface Between user and station. This is the interface a, This but uh, in LTE there will be UU interface so interfaces get changed and also the technology uh, used in that interface will also be changed from evolution to evolution when coming to 2G this is the interface so this is base transceiver transceiver transmitter and receiver antennas will be present so parallelly it may serve at a particular instant of time it may serve 10 to 11 people in GSM and uh, 10 to 11 users and uh, this is nothing but base station controller other thing base station controller is for control part we will be using controller under base station controller we will be having number of base transceivers transceivers will be having number of mobile phones so always if you suppose number of mobile phones will be greater than base station transceivers and uh, base transceivers and uh, base, number of base transmitters will be greater than base station controllers because group of base transceivers will give us base station controllers okay like base station controller will be having some group base stations so base transceiver station what are the functions functionalities of base transceiver uh, station okay mm. here it encodes encrypts uh, basically uh, when we take base transceiver uh, in our lte it is combined like base station transceiver and uh, controller both are combined into one unit Okay, that is nothing but E node B we are now. In 3G it is called as node B and in 4G it is called as E node B. E node B is nothing but evolved node. Evolved in the sense some enhancements has done for the existing node. So let me explain. Uh, in that we are having st uh, stack. LT we will bring it as LT stack. E node B stack. Similarly, we will be having for base station transceiver also. We will be having stack. In that we are having different layers. Yes, each layer has its own function. So, uh, to, in our, in total, it will serve the following functionalities. It encrypts the data and it encodes the data. It multiplexes. Like, uh, see, basically, there can channels and uh, channels will be broadly classified into control channels, dedicated channels. And in control also will be common control channels and dedicated control channels. And similarly, traffic channels. See, one is common, one is dedicated. Under common, you will be having control channels, traffic channels. Under dedicated also, you will be having common channels, dedicated channels. Common, first control. Control in the sense, whatever is necessary for transmitting data, handshaking, what are the signals, like what is the configuration. If you are sending something, first receiver should be configured with these parameters. These configurations and suppose network, you will be getting some broadcast messages, right, which is common to every mobile. So, whenever you broadcast something, uh, that will be received by all the people in that particular network. So, uh, like earthquake notifications and uh, some weather reports, these kind of things will be broadcasted under, under common control. This is one example for common control channel. So, everything, control information and what are the parameters that need to be exchanged for establishing a data or for establishing a data call or for establishing some phone call. For this, what are the configurations that are required? That will come under control information. And uh, the other thing is dedicated or tra uh, uh, this is control channel and the other will be traffic channel. Traffic channel is nothing but data, okay, for transmitting data. Control traffic, under control you will be having common and uh, common control channel and dedicated control channel. Common in the sense, it is common for all the users. Dedicated in the sense, you are making a call to person B. Only person B should receive that call, right? No other person should receive. So that is nothing but dedicated. Dedicated control channel in the sense, some configurations which is related to only that particular UV. Okay? And a dedicated traffic channel in the sense, dedicated data only to that particular UV. These kind of things. This mapping will be there. Uh, like which data to map to control channel, which data should be mapped to data channel. These kinds of mappings will be done by base transceiver. And also, whenever you send some data, you can't just send it out because it can be uh, it can be hacked by other people. And like in 1G, if you take, there is 
many chances of hacking there is no security provider there is no encryption of data nothing is provided so uh, even the sim also they can use some that number with the i mean in some other mobile they can insert that sim and they can send data as if that person is sending a uh, like there is no security they can easily hack no encryption nothing so whenever it is getting transmitted in the middle they can have some they can keep some receiver kind of thing and they can receive from that path also so uh, when compared to 1g it has these features like like encryption is there uh, like uh, as i told you it's are there right common channels and it, so that multiplexing will be there so mul- multiplexing i think uh, you know right so when and like it will be provided with uh, some slots if it is tdm it will be provided with some slots at one slot one user is provided with uh, one channel right so in the same way first same user you will be having broadcast messages dedicated messages these kind of messages right so it will be multiplexed those who have higher priority that will be given first slot or first channel and then the other people i mean other not other people the same user with some low priority data will be served in some other channels this multiplexing will be done for channels so this mapping this multiplexing and modulations <coughs> encoding modulations and rf signals to antenna right radio frequency signals so these things will be done in base station transceiver and uh, communicates with mobile station it is the intermediate between mobile station and base station controller it communicate with uh, communicates with these two entities and consists of trans transceivers transmitter and receiver units and uh, base station controller under base station controller see what it controls radio resources you are like see we are having this much, suppose we are having some 10 megahertz or actually it is in 1 point for led it is 1.4 megahertz you are having some spectrum in that it will be it will be divided and um, like it will be allocated like how to uh, milliseconds of frame structure so way to uh, in one millisecond okay this user is allocated at this point of time in another millisecond this user is allocated the spectrum with this time so that resource allocations where which frequency to allocate to this particular user at which time slot we need to allocate to this particular user these all things will be taken care by bss that is nothing but resources what radio resources in the sense radio spectrum is allocated to each resource and at what time and at what frequency that will be managed by base station controller uh, assigns frequencies and time slots as i told you assigns frequencies and time slots for all the mobile stations in, uh, and handles call setup like for initial call setup what should be done uh, initially you will be switching on your phone right so then you directly you can't make your call it will take some time first you will be like once you switch on your phone slowly your network will be connected then you will be having some signal strength at the top of your phone maybe at the right top of your phone you will be having signal strength uh, once you get that signal strength only you will be capable of making that call right till that then it is we can say that the phone is in idle mode whenever you start uh, calling to some other person and whenever it is connected so to some other people then we can say that call is connected and it is in a connected state so that kind of in order to make a call there will be some set of procedures which should be uh, performed before that before making a call so it handles this psc handles that call setup procedure okay and ha- hand over for each mobile station when to hand over these are the so uh, like like i told right um, uv will be give, mobile will be giving measurement reports to base transceiver and this base transceiver will be given i mean this measurement reports will be transmit uh, transfer to base controller this is the controller it may it controls everything uh, which is under uh, base station okay so uh, this decisions when to hand over to which cell to hand over these things will be taken care by bsc and it communicates with now the terminal will be and as uh, you have seen in the architecture it will be between uh, bts and msc i think you can see it in the architecture see uh, as of now we discussed sim mobile equipment base station transceiver is in between mobile equipment and base station controller under base station transceiver we will be having number of mobiles and under base station controller we will be having number of base transceivers and under msc we will be having number of bss 
it is something like hierarchy kind of thing okay as of now you are having any doubts if you are having anything please let me know okay so it come uh, this is is it clear or uh, you are having any doubts are you getting something if you have any doubts please shall i proceed yeah i think there are many topics to cover let me proceed if you have any doubts uh, please let me know at the end of session or uh, please do uh, uh, mail to our uh, coordinator so they in touch with me okay okay fine uh, okay base station controller yeah fine uh, this thing i explained right base station controller what are the features and what are the parameters it handles and uh, coming to network switch, uh, switching system what is network switching uh, see until from uv to from yeah from mobile to uh, base transceiver it is called as radio interface and from that it is called as networking from <coughs> till base station controller it will be called as radio interface and that interface is also mentioned right uh, and from base in the network since, since these are the things which are used for msc is basically responsible for switching and routing of these things then some configuration some paging miss so this will be a, a this will be a part of network and uh, this hlr these also deals with some database kind of things some uh, exchange of uh, keys these kind of things so it will come under since that is radio interface that will come under uh, base station uh, subsystem and it will be networking switching subsystem okay and here we will be having these entities here as i shown you in that architecture and uh, mobile switching center what are the functionalities of mobile switching center so it is the heart of the network so without that you can't even make a call so it is the one which will route your calls <clears throat> so it is the one which identifies and like if you are mailing to some person in some other state it will the one it is the one which will identify okay this belong since this has some std code this has some std code will belong to some other state and uh, it has it has some local code it will belong to some other thing so this mobile the destination user Uh, will is under this msc it will recognize that and it will be the one which will route the packets from this msc to the destination also will be having some M will route from uh, this so this msc destination msc from destination msc uh, the call will go to so destinations base trans uh, transceiver and then to uh, user okay and it is the heart of network uh, manages communication between gsm and other networks see uh, <clears throat> if you take uh, we are having one concept called circuit switch fall fallback network i think as of now it is not required but uh, just to be i am uh, just telling that um, when uh, we are having uh, this is 2g right we are having G. so uh, in 4g uh, there may be cases like um <clears throat> your phone may not be so at some point of time the 4g signals are very low so your phone is not not supporting that 4g so then what happens is it will fall back to 3g suppose you are 3g <coughs> uh, as of now you are having 3g phones and 3g sims then so your uh, network is also giving you 3g signal you are you got some services for that you paid for 3g services and you are getting suppose 3g services so you get, went to some other place where there are no towers of 3g only 2g towers are deployed so what will happen at least maybe you cannot be served with some data but at least you will be you should be provided with the minimum services like call services message services mails these kind of services should be provided to what happens is it will fall back from 3g to network so this is nothing but circuit switch fall back network like falling back from one to below generation is nothing but falling back to below network uh, so manages communication between gsm and other networks the other networks can be from lower network 
kind of things and uh, building information and collection so whether uh, see uh, whether he is prepaid as i told you whether it is prepaid or postpaid how to bill him whether he has uh, he extended his services or whether he paid the bill or whether he is allocated with uh, this where this resources these kind of things will be taken care by um, uh, like authentication vectors will be generated and hlr will be giving this kind of information uh mobility management coming to mobility management like first it will be registration uh, whenever you switch on a phone you should be registered with some msc and uh, registering with in order to register with msc since you can't direct equipment directly connect to msc there will be base stations involved base transceivers involved in between so in uh, first whenever you switch on a phone you like like msc will be broadcasting the paging messages every time so that paging message will be reaching your phone then you will be is it yes that will be received by base transceiver so you can't directly receive that so after receiving that you will be playing back to base and location update suppose you are changing to some other location it, at that location in roaming right so that location update things these things will be taken care by msc if you change your location suppose he is in this radius and he is in uh, this area now he moved to this is the his vl his hlr this is his home location but he moved to some other vista location these things will be updated by msc and inter bsc and inter msc call handoff inter bsc intra bsc intra in the sense within suppose that phone can be uh, like you as i told you there are many phones under base station sub system right so that if you are calling the person which is under same bss then it is called as intra intra i n t r a hand but whenever you are calling to some other person like suppose an msc under msc you are having suppose three bss base station sub system so whenever you are call you are not calling to the person under same bss you are maybe calling to uh, some other person under different bss but under same msc destination user will be under different base station sub system but he will be under same msc so then that is called as inter bss and similarly if it is under same mss source and destination users belong to same msc mobile switching center that is called as intra and if it is like different state and different msc like our source user is in some msc and the destination is use uh, destination uh, mobile is under some different msc then it is called as in intra means everything within inter means out of that okay that is called as intra inter m call handoff <laughs> uh coming to home location register what is hlr what it stores see stores information about each subscriber that belongs to it msc in permanent and temp fashion as i told you it stores the information like whenever you give some sim you will be giving you you will be sharing your profile with him that information will be stored in hlr what is a person what uh, like all the details related to you will be stored what is the qs that should be provided to him qs in the sense quality of service like if you pay some high amount this much of quality service will be provided if you pay some good amount a kind of thing if you see for some 3g or 4g services if you pay for that if you opt for that you will be provided with 4g so if you opt for only 1g or if you opt for only 2g you will be provided with only these kind of things will be stored in hlr stores information about subscriber Uh, that belongs to uh, it msc in permanent and temporary fashion as soon as mobile subscriber leaves its current local area the information in the hlr is updated who updates that as i told you msc will update it uh, since msc is the one which routes and msc is the one which knows uh, whether the where the user is in the destination network so it will uh, update the hlr like now so, till now he is in our location but now he moved to this particular msc uh, moved to this particular vlr this particular msc this status this location update of the user will be uh, given by msc to hlr and database what database contains these things um, 
HLR has basically um, like whether he is prepaid, postpaid, roaming, the restrictions and what are the supplementary services like call barring, what services we can give, we can give him always connected or we can give, we can not paying outgoing calls, incoming calls, whatever you want, these supplementary services, these in, in HLR. <coughs> Vista location register. Uh, Vista location is uh, register is nothing but temporary, right? So you will be going some other by like you are having some session or some kind of thing. So you'll be going some other going to some other location and you'll be coming back. So you are a temporary subscriber to that particular location, but you are a home subscriber to the uh, place where you have taken your sim and where you are staying, right? Uh, whenever you go to some other place, for that place you are the visitor, so your uh, profile will be stored in visitor location register, it is temporary storage. Since you are going temporarily, it will be a temporary database. So this temporary database which updates whenever new MS enters its area by HLR database. Okay. Whenever you go to some other, same thing. And assign a team C, team uh, to each MS. Uh, entering the VLR area which keeps on changing and it will assign uh, team C team C in the sense temporary mobile subscriber identity so since you are going for only some particular point or particular time um, you will be assigned with some identity identifier that is nothing but team C so team C will keep on changing right if you go to some other location again team C will get updated and changed these things will be stored in Vista location region and controls those mobiles roaming in its area. Whenever you are roam, since you are going to some other location, it will come under roaming and uh, it will be your mobile. And at that time, uh, this MSC and uh, this home HLR can't do anything. And in the sense, they will be, the VLR will be uh, asking MSC uh, whether he, like some person of your MSC has come to my network, whether can I provide him some services. Like he, then this MSC, home MSC will give him, yeah, he is uh, my subscriber. You can give him, in for your understanding, I'm saying like this, and uh, you can uh, give him these services. Like he, he here in home work, he is opted with data services and uh, uh, voice calls. So you can provide him these services to uh, this subscriber. This, these things will be intimated by uh, home MSC. Then Vista MSC will be providing these things to the mobile. So, controls those mobiles roaming in its area. This has whole control on that. Uh, control in the sense the information related to that will be uh, stored in that. Uh, and the, all the routing again that will be taken care by destination MSC. Database contains MC location area authentication key. Authentication key in the sense whenever uh, see you are resist that is fine. But uh, like you there should be some validation. Is he a valid user? Uh, or is he some other uses like there will be some authentication proje procedure that will be taking uh, taking place and once you register when you whenever you are registered be checking if you are valid user or not if you are uh, uh, like um, if you have some feedback before or uh, if you have some uh, services opted and uh, these kind of things will be validated so for that we need we have having authentication keys and this proceeds like how authentication vectors uh, these authentication vectors will be generated here this database will contain this authentication vectors so this things it will be exchanging and checking if it is valid user as i told you this will this vlr will check with the target msc and the target msc will check with source i mean home msc and whenever home msc, home MSC tells that he is a valid user then we start uh, visitor network and in the sense visitor MSC will provide him services until and unless that is HLR home home uh, MSC tells that he is not authenticated unless and until that it won't wait uh, the destination MSC won't provide him the services so this uh, Vista database mainly contains these things and authentication center what is authentication center as I told you there will be some keys which will be generated so basically what happens is with having MSC, this authentication keys, uh, authentication center we are having. So what happens is this authentication center center gives some keys to. First, what happens when mobile mobile will be registered with MSC? 
this same he he will tell this msc will that so this particular mobile is registered related to this it will update to H, hss so based on that what it will do it will update all the details to ms and also the location of the location details of this particular mobile station hss will take care of updation things so after this need to authenticate right whether this is whether he is a per, like valid subscriber or not so for this purpose well, what will be having will be having authentication center it will contain this msc will provide some algorithms <coughs> the like authentication center will basically have group of algorithms for encryption and for integrity uh, i think you know what is encryption and integrity so this encryption and integrity algorithms will be provided by authentication center list of that will be provided under that msc will select only one particular algorithm and keys will also be provided some keys will also be provided uh, by authentication center so this msc what it will do this it will select particular algorithm and per keys and it will generate some key and same algorithms it will gen, uh, give to uh, mobile subscriber some like uh, algorithms and some keys it will share with the help by using this combination algorithms together with vectors will give us some output some output in the sense the integrity will be having some mac kind of thing and for ciphering will be having some output right for some encrypted output so first for uh, integrity what it will be checking with the help of this it will be ha- having one key and with the help of uh, uh, algorithms and uh, keys it will be generating some other key so it will what it will do is now this subscriber will send that key back to msc after generating since these algorithms are shared by first msc and then this user will share the key that is generated with the help of this algorithms and authentication vectors it will send that particular key what is generated that will be sent compared before it has generated one key right that key will be compared with user key so in that basis in that we'll be having some sim operations i mean some uh, identity for the user using that it will send uh, it will some key and based on that key both keys msc will be app encryption for encryption we are having snow 3g a es es 128 164 bits this kind of thing just uh, just surf what is es and snow 3g what are the encryption and uh, integrity algorithms that can be used now uh, these are some of the algorithm jduc this kind of algorithms will be used so these kind of algorithms as well as keys for encryption so in order to have some have something encrypted there should be so, some key right with the help of that key only you'll be encrypting your data so that key will be present in authentication center it also protects because of this encryption someone can't eavesdrop right someone can't deep into your network and uh, like security will be high with the help by having this uh, encryption and uh, integrity as i told you in 1g someone if peeps in the middle they can act as he can act as receiver and they can receive the information which is uh, destined to some other some destined to some other network right here it can't be even though he receives he can't understand even though he peeps into the network and he try to uh, like try to take the data which is uh, coming f- from one transmitter to other receiver he, he can't decode the data since it is in encrypted form he, he can't even decrypt because he don't have that particular key which is exchanged only between that ms and uh, destination ms so here since we are having uh, we are talking about authentication between you uh, mobile station and uh, uh, msc so thus that keys will be only present with msc and mobile station so no other can have uh, even though some other person eaves drop or somebody uh, has done they can't decode and uh, this is highly secured basic so protects ne- network operators from fraud situated in special protected part of hlr this is a part of hlr so i think someone asked what is auc i think you got what is auc let me update again uh, 
one more thing eir i guess after this i think operation and management maintenance center i'll be explaining you in the next session it's already 10 for let me let me explain what is eir eir is nothing but equipment identity register i told you right what uh, in equipment identity itself equipment equipment in the sense some hardware device that is nothing but your mobile so identity like what is a, who is a manufacturer what is the identity to that particular each mobile phone is given some identity that identity some identity number that that is nothing but imei number that imei number along with hardware hello manufacturer data base that is used to track handsets in imei number using this we can like some i, I told you two times right uh, something goes wrong or you lost your phone you can be traced uh, that phone can be traced with the help of imei number and <coughs> prevents calls from stolen unauthorized and uh, defective mobile devices on so you lost your phone then you may then <coughs> report if you report it in the police station like you lost your phone you can just block that phone i mean block in the sense you can keep that phone in the blacklist with the help if you have i am number you can black put that phone in blacklist so that uh, even if it is stolen some other persons can't use that phone Uh, for some other purposes like fun, uh, some uh, offensive purposes or some in military we are having some secured uh, things right for that purpose these kind of things they can't use these things so basically we will be having three things gray list white list and black list if we put our phone if we lost our phone it is and it can't be recovered then it we can say that we can it is in black list uh, white list in the sense normal phone it is in unperm i mean normal usage and it is working fine and it is active now and other thing gray list in the sense uh, you have your phone but uh, you are not using it because of some damages physical damages that kind of things that thing see it is not in use but it is with you so that is called, that is that can be classified under gray list these are the three lists i mean gray list white list uh, under this eir okay Uh, is there any doubt it's already 10:37 so i think i can close the session now uh, if you are having any doubts please let uh, is everything okay or are you having any doubts any doubts i think you are having next session so please if you have any doubts in another 2 minutes so that i can wind off in another 2 minutes is everything clear uh, uh, till now the architecture and what are the network elements you are having what are the functionalities of that so no doubts it seems okay then i am winding off for today maybe in the next session i will explain you how the call process will be and what are the type of handover and other things okay and the remaining slides also i'll be covering in the next session operation management maintenance system how the security what are the characteristics and is another thing application